everybody. Cheers. Lisa Gollum Art here. And I just was going to do a Valentine's tutorial this week. It's going to be a two-part tutorial because I need a lot of dry time between the stages. So I thought I'd just release it as two parts. Both videos will hopefully be short. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to use gold leaf. You can buy it at any art craft store. Uh, isn't it pretty? This is actually copper gold leaf. So I guess it's not really gold. Anyway, you know what I mean. So I'm going to put some of that on just willingly. Then I'm going to do some texturing with some joint compound, the type that you fill holes in drywall with. And I'm not going to make an overt, um, realistic Valentine's painting, but I'm going to be thinking about love. And so basically it's a tutorial, but you won't end up with the exact same painting as I make. You will end up with an abstract that has your heart and soul within it which I think is really, really cool. So I'm going to use gilding. It's called gilding adhesive to put the gold leafing on this canvas. By the way, this is just a painting. I'm going to cover it up and I didn't bother covering it with gesso. I'm just going to paint over it. Um, so if you don't have gilding adhesive, you don't really like I have actually used glue sticks to do this before. It works, it just takes a little bit longer to dry maybe, but it, it does, it has worked for me. So you don't have to have that. Um, you do have to have a few tools though, and some things to make interesting marks in the texture, even if it's just a comb. Okay, so first, take a deep breath. Think about your loved one. No matter who it is, doesn't matter. It can just be a friend. It doesn't have to be the romantic partner of anything. Just think about someone you love. I'm just going to saturate the brush in the gilding adhesive or glue. And I'm just going to put some in the area that I will want the focal point to be in my abstract. And it can you can put more on than you need. It's okay. And you, you leave it for a second, you let it get a little sticky. I put a little down here too. Hope I remember where I put the glue because it's kind of hard to see on this. <laughs> All right, so then you take some of this, set it on, and let it wrinkle a little bit. All good if it wrinkles. I pulled out three sheets. I'm going to be three sheets to the wind. <laughs> That's not the case. I'm actually drinking coffee tonight. Where else did I put it down here? As you can see, this is a messy thing, but it's not difficult. It just uh, <laughs> makes a little bit of a mess. All right, once I kind of got it stuck there a little bit, make sure all the way to the edges of the, where I put the glue. So to put the glue on, I use kind of a soft brush. Now I need kind of a hard bristled stiff brush and I'm just going to brush the excess copper leaf off. I'm not brushing too hard where I want the gold leaf to stay or the copper leaf just around the edges so there's not any loose copper leaf. probably noticed it's not even on there there's some spaces where there is none that's actually what I want I don't want it to be too predictable okay at this point you will have made a lot of mess so <laughs> ah, good luck on you if you do this in your kitchen I wouldn't <laughs> but if you have a craft room or some place that you can vacuum up after it's all good. I say that all the time. I know. It's all good. As long as I don't get any of those in my coffee. Let's check. No, it's all good. <laughs> there. I have uh, a couple types of knives, a putty knife and a normal palette knife. 
Um, I also have a little tool with a rubbery point on the end that I use to draw into the texture once it's there. So first step, after you've breathed and told yourself you can play like a child, I'm thinking about my husband Don and I'm thinking about the light and brightness he's brought to my life. And I'm just going to start moving. Now, my goal is not to cover up all of that, but I will be probably covering up some of it. And anywhere that it gets wet, it will rust a little bit, but I'm not worried about that because the parts I don't cover won't, will look fine. At least that's my theory anyways. So I find this kind of thing is nice to have an underpainting or a painting that you don't want or you don't like underneath because it, it comes out in surprising ways. That's really kind of cool. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I like to hang on to my cameras. That doesn't mesh up. And there's a few places where I want pretty deep texture. That's why I need time to dry. But one of the things I don't want to do is put texture in the, on the entire canvas. There's already going to be some because of the underpainting, but not deep texture everywhere. I really like the way this is hit and miss here a little bit, which is the great thing about texture. When you hang on to it, you can spin it around. I just want a little bit up here to the edge. take a big huge chunk and I'm going to put it right along the bottom of that thing there really deep really really deep and I'm going to flatten it and thin it out as it gets further As I do with anything as an artist, I'm probably going to, you know, overdo the texture, even as I just told you not to. I'm probably going to. <laughs> That's okay, because I can smooth it out later on. Well, as long as I don't wait till it's dry, then I can't. But I'm just trying to get as much on as I, until I feel intuitively that I've got enough. I think that's enough. Wipe off my knife. Okay. So now you can take a comb, or if you have a fun catalyst like I have, you can use one of those. I'm going to do some funky, like, fun lines. Use this end actually. <laughs> I think I made a heart. I wasn't thinking about making a heart. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to take with that theme and kind of do a little bit of a heart vibe elsewhere. Like so. I love these things. I love the lines they create. Make sure to wipe it off. I almost don't want to do anything else, but I wouldn't be much of a teacher if I didn't show you a few things. Now, you can also use a credit card if you want. Maybe to make some straight lines just for fun, because I haven't done that. And if you know anything about composition, Contrasts are good, so contrasting color is one thing, but contrasting the type of lines. So I've got squirvy lines, now I want some straight lines. So making some contrasts happen. Hmm. And 
take this guy, you can just draw, and I'm going to make some. Scribbles. I really like scribbles. A nice fun thing to do at the end is to take the larger palette knife and what you don't want is any texture that kind of sticking straight up because that's really hard to paint nicely. Um, I like to give it a flat surface a little bit if I can. So I use um, this um, putty knife a lot for that. So mine isn't too too bad but like I could very gently take the palette knife and just barely touch it and come down like that. And what it does is it just creates a little more of an interesting, not just a, a distinct line, but kind of a broken line. A little bit. I'm already deciding that it goes this way because of the heart vibe that I started it with. This heart and this heart. And there's two, which is cool because there's me and my husband are two. Two. And that's pretty much it. And I will let this dry for probably, like it would be dry-ish in a, like by tomorrow. But I probably would leave it for a couple days before I put um, paint on it. Done! Yay! So stay tuned because sometime this weekend I will upload part two of our Valentine Intuitive Abstract. I would also be uploading a more traditional step-by-step um, -step paint and sip tutorial of some kind of romantic picture. I haven't decided what yet. So don't forget to tune in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Peace and love. Bye.